Hello, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be exploring the menu system of the Sony A6100. Let's go. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we are continuing our series on the shooting menu for the Sony 6100. We're going piece by piece through the menu system uh, here. And if this is the first link that you've clicked on, please do note that we have previous videos on the uh, other parts of the shooting menu that we've already covered and on the quick menu. And so please do check those out if you're trying to cover all of the shooting controls in order. Before we jump into it, as always, everything we do here is brought to you by Camera Lessons Online, where we believe in teaching the essential skills so that everybody can create beautiful visual art with cameras and photography equipment. We have a four hour introduction to photography class. We we have books, we have free downloads. I encourage you to go check it out. But without further ado, here is our continuing uh, exploration of the menu for the Sony 6100. We're starting today with the second shooting tab uh, up at the top. And there are nine pages inside of this particular submenu. And these are less often changed uh, aspects of shooting, but uh, your video features uh, fit inside of here. And so there's actually some important stuff inside of here as well. Uh, so we're going to go through these just a page at a time, just like we have done before. And we start with the uh, section on movie options. And this first one is exposure mode. So in your quick menu, if you watched our video on that, we talked about how you can choose a uh, an exposure mode in the quick menu uh, in the way the camera comes out of the box, which is really there for changing it in your video shooting. But if you take that out of your quick menu, of course, you can get to it in the menu here where you can shoot uh, your video in program or aperture priority or shutter priority, uh, whatever exposure mode you would want. Now, I always shoot video in either shutter priority or manual mode, and there's a reason. And that is that traditionally we shoot video with a shutter speed that is directly mathematically related to our frame rate. So for instance, if we're shooting 30 frame a second video, we would shoot that at a 60th of a second shutter speed. That way they line up. As a result, I need to shoot in a mode where I can lock my shutter speed into place, and that would be shutter priority or in manual, whichever one you prefer. But you could do it any way that you want to, and the camera will attempt to compensate. Now we're moving into slow and quick mode and we can't do it when shooting uh, in the normal uh, video shooting mode the dial at the top we actually have to go into slow and quick mode on the dial to be able to make the selection but slow and quick mode as I change this uh, is going to be where we can create slow motion shooting inside of the camera so now I've changed to slow and quick and you're gonna notice that I can select whatever shooting mode I would like program aperture priority shutter priority or manual the exact same way that I did before uh, uh, for regular video shooting and the same rules apply for shutter speed and frame rate and I do prefer um, the same kind of uh, setup where I'm shooting uh, a 30th of a second or something mathematically related to it because of the frame rates that s &Q allows for and next is file format you get three options, uh, something called XAVC, 4K or not 4K, and then AVA, uh, AVCHD. These are different degrees of compression. So AVCHD is more compressed uh, in the camera uh, than XAVC is. Now, an important thing, XAVC as a file type requires a 64 gig or larger capacity memory card to operate. And so these will actually be grayed out uh, and unselectable if you have a 32 gig memory card in the camera. So I would not even bother putting something into this camera that is smaller than 64 gigs. And a side note, it doesn't say it here, but you do need it to be a higher speed memory card. Memory of a U, uh, a memory of about a U3 uh, speed, 99. Um, 90 megabytes a second is really what you're aiming for uh, with this camera just to be able to record video at the quality that the camera is capable of and that's where you'd be able to select those different qualities and I'm always shooting something like this in 4k because why not and actually uh, that little warning there when you make that selection tells you you need a higher speed memory card so now let's go down here to recording settings and this is where we choose the quality of that video. So frame rate, that's what the 60 or the 30 or the 24 is. And then we get something about the size of the file. All right. 
uh, 50 megabit, 25 uh, megabit. And so we're thinking about how big this needs to be effectively. Um, do we have a much larger file for viewing on larger screens or do we shrink it down to save space assuming we're never going to watch out anything that's any bigger or more resolute than perhaps a phone. You're also going to find that there's a way to shoot uh, 120 frame a second video inside of here. Now naturally that cannot be 4K quality um, because uh, that's just a whole lot of data but you can actually shoot that uh, set up inside of here. So different options depending on the size that you uh, want it to be. And these are scaling downwards in size of the quality of the file, by the way. So decreasing in quality from top to bottom. Slow and quick settings. Uh, now note, just like before, um, this is actually a mode at the uh, on the dial on the top of the camera for you to be able to go to and select. And this allows you to shoot uh, your slow motion video. And so we are going to have two things inside of here, record settings and the frame rate. So basically, we go into here and we have certain options. We really can't do 60p if we want something to be a really high frame rate. And because of what I'm going to show you on the next menu, I do advise 30p as opposed to 24. Because remember, we want shutter speed and frame rates to really line up with each other. And so if we go into our frame rate options here, what we're going to find is it's all based around 30. So right now, uh, we were defaulted at 120 frames per second, but notice 120, 60, 30, 15, 8, 4. These are all directly related to a 30th of a second uh, uh, shutter speed or 60th of a second shutter speed. And so that's why for that quality before, I prefer 30 over 24. But really the big benefit of this particular feature is shooting that 120 FPS because uh, that's where you can get that slow motion video uh, built into the camera. Um, but we can also shoot for something that's recording very low frame rates for very long, long uh, takes uh, of things. So that could be uh, like time lapse types of videos that we're doing with those. Now next is proxy recording. And you're noticing that says, hey, you're doing 120 frames a second shooting right now. You can't do that. Um, so we've got to actually get out of that in our silent quick frame rate. So I'm just going to drop it to 60 just so that we can take a look. Now proxy recording, here's what it is. When you edit video, you really don't want to actually load the full 4K video file into the memory of your machine because that's just a ton of stuff for it to keep in mind and it's going to slow down your processing dramatically. Instead, we use what's called a proxy file. A proxy file is a very compressed version of your video file that you can actually watch in real time and you can apply edits to that and when you process out your footage, it applies those edits to the full version of the file. So this allows you to work very, very quickly in your video editor. Now, you have two ways of working with proxies, or really rather of creating them. The first is for the camera to create them, which is what this selection is. The other is to load in your video and create the proxy in your video editor, which when you're creating a proxy file, the uh, software really can't be doing anything else at all at the time. And so you've got to step away from the machine for a little bit, uh, but you don't take up as much room on the memory card. Your choice, however you want to do it. In the end, you want to be editing off of a proxy, but however you get there is totally fine. We're to page two, and the next one is autofocus drive speed. Now this is just for video, so how fast does it actually focus when shooting? And we get slow, normal, fast. We're tempted to say, oh, I want focus to be as fast as possible because we like fast autofocus as stills photographers. But think about the watchability of your video. If I'm shooting a sporting event, I might need as fast of autofocus as possible, and that's great. But that's kind of jarring to viewers if I'm moving and racking focus from front to back. Normally, we're doing more narrative type storytelling with our video and we want to be slow or normal for better watchability. So if you can help it, you want a slower autofocus speed in your video storytelling. And that's why they give you the option. All right, so next is the tracking uh, sensitivity. 
responsive and standard. Responsive jumps to new subjects more quickly. Again, this is used in a lot of sporting events. Standard tries to stick with a subject that it's tracking for longer, even if that subject gets occluded by part of the frame uh, for a moment. And so think of it as the stickiness of your tracking system. If I'm shooting a sport where the ball or the hockey puck gets passed regularly, between athletes, I might need to be more responsive. But if I'm following a base runner in baseball, I need to be closer to a standard tracking sensitivity. Okay, so next is auto slow shutter and saying, hey, you can't do this when you're in S and Q mode, so I need to change that on my dial. So we're gonna change that real fast. And this is just on and off, but here's what it is. In low light situations, the auto means that the camera has permission to drop your shutter speed to a 30th of a second as opposed to a 60th in order to uh, bring in more light in those dark environments. Because remember, normal exposure rules still apply even when we're shooting video. We're just doing 30 frames a second. Uh, so this gives the camera permission to adjust for those low light environments. Or we can fix the shutter speed and get perfectly maintained uh, exposure off of the camera and try to deal with it basically ourselves. Next is the initial focus magnifier. So if I'm doing that focus check, how far does it zoom in one times or four times, essentially? And we had something like that uh, when we were looking at our focus magnification for still shooting uh, a few pages ago. Next is audio recording, and this is simple. Is the camera recording audio? Yes or no? And this would include if you plugged a microphone into the camera. I always leave audio recording turned on, uh, even if I'm recording my audio separately. And the reason is it gives me the ability to sync my external audio with the built-in audio better and know that that's accurate. And in my video editing software, I can separate the audio from my video feed and delete it once my external audio has been uh, matched. So that's my preference. Next is going to be audio recording level. And this camera, you have to actually be shooting in certain exposure modes to be able to adjust to this. That's not true in all cameras, but it is here. So we actually need to change our exposure mode uh, here. And this is actually what kind of level we're setting uh, our recording to. You want your audio recording level to be as loud as possible without clipping and certain microphone placements lend themselves to clipping differently, especially with people who speak at different volumes. And so I have found, um, I used to shoot predominantly with a Sony a7R Mark III, and I was using a higher audio recording level. I attached my same microphone to my new a7R Mark IV, and I actually found I had to turn down my auto record because uh, it was just more sensitive. Uh, that was an interesting discovery to make. But here's where you can go in and turn that down. If you're finding that your microphone placement that you regularly use is clipping more often, turn down your audio record. And that will uh, help you out. Now we're on to page three. Audio level display is just whether or not it's showing you while recording what your audio level is. And I find this very, very useful. I don't want to be surprised if I'm actually going to be clipping the uh, the audio uh, as I'm recording. I want to know that I've made a mistake so I can go back and uh, re-record. Next is going to be wind noise reduction. And this actually truncates uh, part of the kilohertz range that's basically recording. It's muffling other parts uh, to try to cut out wind noise. So we use this when we're outside because it does cut down on the amount of uh, wind noise that we do record, but we would never use it inside because we'd actually muffle the sound of the voice. Uh, so uh, also, if you use a microphone with really sophisticated wind guards and wind breaks on it, you would oftentimes experiment with turning this off because the job uh, is being done by the microphone and you don't need to do it by the camera and you can record greater fidelity of the human voice. So next is marker display on and off. And we're going to look at the markers um, and, and certain options in the next menu setting. But this is a guide for, for while shooting and being able to frame your shot on and off. And we've seen guides before. Uh, but there are four major markers that we have, and we can turn them on and off in the marker settings. Center is a centered dot, so you know where the center is to be able to center your subjects. 
Um, so that's going to be the first one of these options. And they can be turned on and off individually. Aspect is what aspect ratio you're actually shooting in. Uh, most of the time we are doing uh, 16 by 9. Uh, but we can set it for different aspect ratios depending on what our production is, is going to be. So we have different options there. Uh, the next one is the safety zone. This actually, uh, older TVs can't show all of the viewable area of a, a piece of footage. And so if we want to actually be safe for a wider variety of screens that something is shown on, we can truncate um, the uh, this zone that we can view so that we can keep our subject inside of it. 80% uh, of the total frame, 90%, or of course we can turn it off. And so that's going to be the option for our safety zone. And last is guide frame, which is basically showing you if your subject is level with the ground and showing you uh, if your leveling is correct. Very, very useful for run and gun uh, video makers. Last option here is going to be movie with shutter. Very, very simple control. The idea is you do have a red video start and stop button on your camera, uh, and it's a smaller button. If you want uh, to be able to shoot video using the shutter release button when you're in video mode, you would turn this on. I actually leave it off to make sure that I can never unintentionally start a video clip. But this is where we would be able to change that.